It's a holiday miracle, travelers. Welcome to another unholy video. Today, I will explain each social group of player and where everyone fits into the pecking order, from the very worst to the absolute tippy top of the player base. So without wasting any time, let's start with the bottom, the absolute worst people that you will encounter. The kinds of people who you are unsure if they're a human being or a pile of garbage that has gained sentience and joined your duty roulette. These are the kind of players who simultaneously have no idea what any mechanic in the game does and have no idea how to play their class properly on top of it. The DPS players who don't AoE, the healers who don't even DPS but still manage to drop the tank, and they deflect any sort of mild criticism to playing like this with you don't pay my sub. Thankfully, the game does put a little symbol next to these players so that you know what you're getting into ahead of time. I'm talking about mentors. I am not exactly sure what attracts people to the status, but the absolute scourge of the world are just always mentors. I'm pretty sure if Hitler was alive, he would have been a mentor in this game. After wondering why that shit stained crown even exists, I have finally pieced it together for you. They serve as a prime example of how not to play the game. Thankfully, this club is exclusive, so there's not too many mentors to encounter but they do make up the absolute bottom of the social hierarchy. Moving up one step from the very bottom, we have our peers, specifically in Limsa Lominsa. Now this is a class of players that are only just above mentors. Every godforsaken time you have to do something in Limsa, it's a group that single-handedly makes you fill with dread. Now there's always an orgy going on in the Aetherite Plaza and some other degeneracy that I don't even want to think about. Now, I do not care what two consenting adults do in their own time, but Ram Ranch is looking like an abstinence-only training camp by comparison. Like, my god, why is it always in public? The only thing good about Scholar was letting you get out of this shithole after level 50. If you ever think that you've done something cringy in your life, like I have, always remember that at least you're not part of this crowd. Maybe I'm uncultured, and my antisocial tendencies are too high, so I don't understand the joy of emoting for 12 hours in the same spot. But my god, it's just so annoying. Just take a big swig of your favorite liquor before visiting the city in the middle of the night and pray that you're too wasted to remember the horror. Alright, now this next one might seem a little bit oddly specific. But I'm going to be talking about people who make class guides on YouTube. These people are always so irritating. Asking you to subscribe to their channel in some bullshit. I bet they're not even mediocre at all the classes that they play. Sometimes they even have the audacity to post their shitty content onto your favorite subreddit. The absolute nerve of these people. Even better, I think they live stream things other than Final Fantasy too. Thankfully it is always hard to tell who these people are while playing Final Fantasy, but they're always lurking somewhere in a corner. Either way, they get the title of not being a mentor in game, but they're only a step above by being a mentor on YouTube. Omnicrafters. Anyone telling you that crafting is not a giant pyramid scheme in this game is just fucking lying. Leveling up your crafters is a big scam of being able to put as much money into it to make your leveling experience faster, and then trying to make all that money back by selling crafting materials to other crafters. If everyone just signs up 10 of their friends, we will exceed the amount of atoms in the universe with the number of people that we have crafting. Once you're at the top, you still have to pentameld all your shit to even make the stuff for your static. I definitely don't know that from experience. However, this social class that I'm talking about is for the true crafters. The people who don't do anything else other than craft. I do admire their dedication, but they're also the group that will complain if they have to go into a single instance for a patch that interrupts their important crafting time. The only rotation mastery they need is of the craft. So it does suck that they have to do their instances once in a while. At least this group is restoring Ishgard for everyone else who didn't want to deal with the minigame. Flowers. The returning players. You might think it's weird that I haven't mentioned sprouts yet, but let me be clear. Flowers are just worse sprouts. Unlike new players who have no idea what's going on and are just trying to learn, these people have no idea what's going on, but have preconceptions of what they believe is truly right. So it's a complete coin flip, because flowers come in all shapes and sizes. You can get a hardcore player who stopped playing to raise his kid and finish med school, only to finally come back and lead your group down the path of righteousness. Or, there could be a former mentor who lost the status after the player commendation requirement was increased. 
you will find out very quickly if that flower is a beautiful rose or a rotten dead horse arm lily. Either way, flowers do start to make up the bottom of the middle part of the social hierarchy. Now just above that we have plot watchers, and these players are the ones that don't play the game for anything other than the plot. Only resubbing just for the patch, but not for the new instances, or even the optional instances, just to get that character development. You might think that it is weird that flowers and plot watchers are not the same group. The difference between the two is that plot watchers have the biggest ego of any social group within Final Fantasy XIV. Always reminding us that our lord and savior Yoshi P said that they do not have to remain subbed at all times and it is okay to take breaks. And while I do think that is a true statement and very noble, they also seem to forget that he didn't say don't learn how to play your class properly and don't do damage while being a healer. No one cares if you want to run dungeons only once and have never seen an instance without the message a player is new to this duty. That is not an excuse for not having any idea what your class does. While you might think it's weird that this class is so far up in the pecking order despite being one of the more annoying parts of the community, this group of sycophants have the dev team wrapped around their finger. The sheer amount of pressure they exude to make the normal content as brain dead as humanly possible and further the gap between normal and hard content has earned them this higher rank because they have way too much sway in what gets changed in the game. Alright, now we can talk about Sprouts, the new players. And while new players might feel a little bit self-conscious about themselves, I think in general the community always has a nice place in their heart for new players. Long before I was a jaded, cold-blooded animal in this game, I too was once bewildered and inspired by everything for the first time. Sprouts provide a gateway into that nostalgia that I don't think anyone else can really convey. I think we all chuckle a little bit when we see them die to the same shit that caught us off guard for the first time. Running away from everyone with a stack marker, or forgetting to turn on tank stance for just a little bit too long. Though you never really have to fear Sprouts, they're usually willing to listen for simple advice and are the people who are willing to try to improve. But a wise man once said, Beware the Sprout who does not listen. Don't take everything that you hear from people as ironclad fact, but most people won't lie to you if they tell you to stack with the party. Everyone usually likes Sprouts, so my recommendation? Use that power and milk some free karma on Reddit while you still can, or just pretend to be a Sprout for upvotes. What the hell do I care? Normies. We're finally at the bulk of the community, the true middle class. If you play Final Fantasy XIV, you're probably a normie. This is the group that plays uh, fairly often. They're not going to be subbed 100% of the time, but more so than the plot watchers. They will run weekly content and are usually just trying their best to do their rotation and do a good enough job, even if the content that they run is not exactly that hard. They are happy to help new players, but usually just say nothing in chat minus a greeting at the beginning and a thank you at the end. If they manage to really screw something up, they will make notes and adjust any time they have to run that content later. They are the ones who are willing to stand on the platforms in Labyrinth of the Ancients and always go into the belly as a DPS on any alliance. Usually pretty relaxed to talk to, fine with being mediocre, but do have a tendency to shit on World of Warcraft, which is a pretty weird fixation. I never even played WoW, but man, this group makes me feel obligated to hate on it. Either way, normies do make up the bulk of the community and are pretty okay in general. Now we can get to Raiders, the people who run hard content every week. These are the people who are trying to gear up for best in slot, and they might not play it very often, but they don't need to, because they are only focused on whatever the current raid tier is. If you have cleared one Savage Raid, you're already probably part of the top 10% of the player base. This group does have a firm understanding of game mechanics and probably know how to play their class. Maybe. While they don't make up the largest part of the player base, they do get to experience some of the most involved content and honestly some of the most interesting. Thankfully, they do still get something thrown at them every now and again, but we don't get three ultimates per expansion, so oh well. Now we're going to talk about free-to-play players. F2P players are honestly intimidating for sub-payers. While some free-to-play players probably feel like they owe some debt to the people who actually pay to play the game, in reality... Free-to-play players are under no obligation to sub-payers. They enjoy Heaven's Word and are probably the only people who even know what an optimized level 60 rotation looks like. This group has managed to maximize the content that they have access to to the absolute limit. Leveling everything to 60, running the content that most players who started playing since Stormblood probably never even heard of. 
In fact, most don't even know that there's a whole two additional expansions beyond what they have access to. In many ways, they are much more intimidating because they probably put in more hours than the people who paid just to be able to experience the plot every single patch. The only downside for them is that they have no friends. We have now finished talking about everybody in the middle class of the social hierarchy. Now it's time to start talking about the billionaires and the people who actually control the entire social structure of Final Fantasy XIV. We begin by talking about Yoshi P. He has an entire tier dedicated to him. He is Jesus Christ himself. This man has founded his own religion, died for our sins, solved world hunger, and even found the cure for coronavirus. And despite all these amazing accomplishments, he can never be the top of the pecking order. And this is because he does not want it. He did manage to save this game from the brink of death, but at the same time, he has limited his power. Because if he became any stronger, not even God himself would stand a chance. The community worships him. You probably respect him. And he is the one who will fix all of the bugs in Cyberpunk 2077. All that's left is for him to purge mentorship. Now right above Yoshi P are going to be interior decorators. Now have you ever heard of Housing Extreme? Well these players run freaking Housing Ultimate. The amount of dedication and luck required to get a house in the first place is already bad enough. But these players interact with this awful clunky decorating system and make the most beautiful interior decorations that even Frank Lloyd Wright himself would be proud of. I have no idea how they do it. If you ever go randomly through the housing districts, there's always a chance that you'll find a house that just overwhelms you with emotion. The good kind of emotions, too. They have all their crafters and gatherers leveled up to be able to make exactly what they need, and I wouldn't be surprised if their planning is down to the micron. The only thing I can say almost for certain is if they decorate their digital house as well as this, their real-life house probably looks like shit. Still, they do manage to make their ways up into the upper echelons of the social hierarchy. We are now almost at the peak, with hardcore raiders. And this is the type of player who's going to strike fear into your soul. They are born from the game code. Their living spaces are located in the basement of Square Enix's headquarters around the globe, just for a better server connection. Somehow, in spite of their human limitations, they manage to play better than an AI designed to play the game. A person with their brain hardwired to the computer could probably not play as well as them. They are the outliers on parsers. Not that they even need the parsers. Parsers need them. They have their GPU and graphic settings completely tailored for optimal DPS, and despite probably not deserving them, they will stick around in your shitty prog group and legitimately try to help you. These are the people that mentors wish they could be. They know the content. They breathe the content. They take the content out on a date and ejaculate their knowledge onto other players. They are almost the top dog if it wasn't for another social group. And that group is going to go to glamourers. And I'm not talking about the shitty glamours that you see. No Dalmel skin top, not the 2B legging shit. I'm talking about the crowd of players that are single-handedly keeping this game alive. These are the type of players that PvP just to glam. They level every class to 80, including crafters and gatherers, just to get their outfit right and have the perfect aesthetic for every occasion. They will clear Savage and Ultimate, not for best in slot, but just to look fly as fuck. Not only do they probably parse like a monster, they even look better than you while doing it. It's the kind of player that you encounter only once in a lifetime. And when you see them, you can feel the presence change in your room. They know every mechanic in every fight and how to optimize their DPS at every single level and manipulate the RNG to get the glamour drop that they need. Fuck, they probably decorated their house as well. World leaders fear them and our peers worship them. Fashion fantasy players are the true oligarchs of the Final Fantasy XIV community. With that, you now have a complete understanding of the Final Fantasy XIV community. Now get out there and emote for 12 hours in Limsa.